tassels there because our Lord was scourged. Feast of the Holy Innocents. And there's a sideway. Today is the Feast of the Holy Innocents, December the 28th. A couple days after Christmas. And so a few considerations in the name of the Father and the Son, the Holy Ghost, Amen. It's one of the great mysteries of the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. You know that God the Son became man and he came here to save the entire human race. And every single thing that God did, it says in the book of Genesis, and God created the morning, evening and morning was the first day. And God saw that he did, everything that he did was good. Evening and morning was the second day, and all that he did was good. And the third day, and all that he did was good. And everything that God did was good. Everything. But what happened? God did good, but then Lucifer turned against God and said, I will not serve God, non serviam. And then Adam turned against God and said, I will disobey God. And he ate the forbidden fruit. We want to know evil. Why would you want to know evil in a world that is good? God made the world so beautiful. He made the world so perfect. He made the world nothing but good. But Adam was insistent that he would learn to know evil. And so he did know evil. And evil was brought into the world because of his pride, because of his disobedience. And evil came into the universe because of Lucifer. And now God decided he would fix that evil. He would wipe that evil away. So he would send his only begotten son, God the Son, to become man in order to wipe away evil, in order to brain again and make the world beautiful again, but more beautiful than it was originally. Now he's been born only for a few days. He's only been on the earth for a few days. He's preached no sermons, so he couldn't have offended anyone. He didn't say anything that was harmful. He didn't say anything at all. He was just quiet, a little baby in a cave. And he came out of his cave and he was brought to the temple and he was quiet. And when he was inside the temple after 40 days, what happened? Simeon came and said, The nunc dimitis servum tuum domineo. Now dismiss thy servant, O Lord, according to thy word in peace. And Simeon was so happy that he could hold the baby. And Anna, an 80-year-old lady, she walked around the temple saying, The Son of God is here. The Messiah is here. And she was so happy. And some people believed. And then the little quiet Saint Joseph and the most beloved Blessed Virgin Mary they just went quietly back to their place in Bethlehem. Three kings came. They came from a great distance. They came from different countries. And they came, we have come, kings from afar, to adore the king. We saw his star. Did you know the star was right above Israel? It was right above Israel. And you know the Jews didn't pay attention to it? They were so blinded by their lies, by their wicked lives, by their sinfulness that they didn't even notice the star. But three pagan kings noticed that there was a special star that was so close to the earth that no one could miss it. It would be like missing the moon. The moon rises and the moon sets. You notice the moon's really big and it moves through the sky and it's not like the other stars. And this star was so big and it was so significant, everyone noticed it except for the people of Israel. And the three kings came and they said, this star is over Israel, the star that we found in the east. And we came and now we can't see the star, we're inside of Israel, but the star led us here. So tell us where the Son of Man is to be born. Where is the King of Kings to be born? Where is the Messiah to be born? Because all we heard is to be born in Israel. Now we're here. There's a lot of towns in Israel. So which town is he supposed to be born in? And so he's going to be born in the town of Bethlehem. So they said, okay, oh, blessed Bethlehem, this will be the town. So they went to Bethlehem, and the star appeared again. The three kings saw the baby, and they were so happy. They gave him gold, they gave him frankincense, they gave him myrrh, and they went back. In a dream, an angel said, don't go back and tell Herod where the child was born. Go back another way. Per aliam viem. Go back another way. So they did. And what happened? The mystery of the presence of Christ. Wherever Jesus Christ comes, wherever goodness comes, wherever God comes, there will be evil men that will be angry, and they will be filled with hate. You know, you can't make them happy. What did our Lord Jesus Christ do to offend Herod? He did nothing. He did not do anything illegal. He did nothing offensive. He said no bad word. He was gentle. He was a little innocent baby. 
All he was was a little bitty boy baby there in a poor house just outside of a cave where he was born in Nazareth, only alive for a few days on this earth. And Herod became nervous, and Herod became angry, because the king was alive, and the king was born, and he wanted that king dead. And so he commanded his soldiers to go to Bethlehem. And he said, all right, this boy is going to be either just born, an infant, or he might be as old as a year old. So I want to kill every single boy that's two years old and younger. Kill every one of them. And I know I will have killed the king. So one night, the soldiers came without any warning. And remember that the people of the mothers of Jerusalem, the mothers of Rama, they were so happy. Many of their husbands were shepherds. And they were up in the mountains one particular night. And they saw the angels stand in front of them in great brightness. And they heard this beautiful singing, Gloria and Excelsis Deo. Notice there was no Gloria in the Mass today. Every day this week we have a Gloria, but it was skipped today. No Gloria. Because these men, Herod's soldiers, did not hear the Gloria. They didn't hear it. They were filled with hate. They were filled with wickedness. They were filled with lies. They were filled with evil, and they said, go and kill every single boy. And they went with a sword. They went into the houses, and according to St. Jerome, they killed 500 boys. That's a lot of boys. They went in house after house. Anyone looks like a little bitty boy of the two years old or younger, they just killed them. And they went from house to house, and they killed them all. Some houses would have killed two boys. Other houses, only one. But they killed them all. And they went all throughout, and there was weeping in Rama, And a prophecy was fulfilled. You know what it said in the Old Testament? Isaiah the prophet said that they, when, the, when our Lord Jesus Christ is born, it's 800 years before Christ was born, when the Messiah is born, there will be rejoicing all throughout the whole world. They will come from Saba and from the Orient, and they will come to praise him. But the mothers of Rama shall weep and shall mourn, because their children are not. Their sons are not. How is it that the place of Bethlehem, where Christ is going to be born, they're going to weep? But in the far places they shall be happy. And so, because the world hates Christ. Remember when our Lord turned 30 years old, you know what he said? He told his apostles, the world hates me. The world will also hate you. When did the world start to hate Christ? Was it when he was 30 years old and began to preach that you have to hate the world and despise the world? Was it when he performed his miracles? Was it when he offended the world? No. The world hated him because he's God. The world hated him because he's good. The world hated him because he is filled with infinite love. The world can't stand infinite love. The world can't stand infinite goodness. The world can't stand innocence. The world can't stand these things. It never could. The innocent little boy was inside of that crib, doing nothing but good, being nothing but good, and they went to kill him. And here is where we see the foolishness of Satan. We must understand that Satan shall be mocked for all eternity. And Satan is a fool. Because you know what? Boys die every day. They die of sickness. They die of all kinds of things and accidents. Boys die every day. But these boys, they were killed only because of the love of Christ. And they were killed only because of the hatred of Christ. So that the soldiers came and said, where is Christ? And they killed him. They killed the boys. And these boys ended up having a glory. You know what happened to these boys? They were the first children to enter into the kingdom of heaven. You know the gates of heaven were closed from the time of Adam's sin until the very until the time of Christ rose from the dead. But you know on that day when our Lord said to the good thief, Dismas, this day thou shalt be with me in paradise. Remember that when Dismas is there at the right hand of our Lord, dying on the cross, that wicked thief, but he repented of his wickedness. You know when he went into heaven, he went with 500 boys. He saw those 500 little baby boys that died for the love of Christ. You know what they did? They were like, you know, they were like guards. You know that the greatest honor of a guard? A guard is there to protect the king. And he is walking along. 
And the enemy comes and he takes a sword to cut the king in half. Or he takes a gun to shoot the king. What does a great guard do? He jumps in front of the bullet. He jumps in front of the sword. And the sword cuts the guard. And the king escapes. And that guard has a glory of, that will never be taken away. You know that we're all going to die. Everybody's going to die. A lot of people are going to die after taking their medication. Suppose when do you want to die? I'm 175 years old, and I got my little pill box. It's got M, T, W, T, F, and S on it. That's Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. And then I got another pill box. It's got breakfast and lunch and dinner on it. And I took out, I opened my lunch pill box and I pulled out my 47 pills and I took it. And it was on Wednesday and I took the pills and then, <laughs> what a happy death. He took after he took his medication. He died after taking his medications. He died after eating a healthy breakfast. And then he, he died. They took his body and they threw it in the grave and they had a nice little ceremony. You know what that death is? Happy life. It's disgusting. <laughs> That's what it is. But you know what a beautiful death is? Death for the sake of saving God. You can't save God. No one can save God. But these 500 boys, they had their bodies cut in half so that God could escape. And Joseph took the little boy in the night, and he took his Blessed Virgin Mary. Do you know think he told Mary, they're trying to kill the child? Do you think or Joseph told Mary that? He didn't tell her that. You know what he did? He got in the middle of the night. The angel appeared to Joseph, and he says, they're going to kill the baby. You need to move to Egypt. You know what St. Joseph did? He woke up and he said, Mary, my beloved wife, I think we want to move to Egypt. When do you want to move? How about now? Now imagine the average wife. It's midnight, and the husband wakes up the wife and says, let's move to Egypt. Oh, really? I don't remember talking about that. When did we discuss going to Egypt? And why is it so important to leave at midnight? You know what the Blessed Virgin Mary did? Joseph, you want to go to Egypt? Well, let's go to Egypt. You want to go at midnight? Why not? I've got nothing else scheduled. And so she happily got up, but she took the little child, and she went with Joseph, and they went to Egypt. If Joseph wanted to go to Egypt, there must be some good reason to go to Egypt. You know that Egypt, you know what Egypt stands for in sacred scripture? It's sin. Egypt is an evil place. Do you know that all Satanism comes from Egypt? That all the satanic symbols come from Egypt? You go notice if you'll see cartoons, children's cartoons. And if you see modern movies and you hear rock songs, you notice you'll see a lot of, you'll see pictures of pharaohs. You'll see pictures of pyramids. You'll see pictures of hieroglyphs. You'll see images of Egypt. You know why that is? Because Egypt is where Satanism comes from. Egypt is the place where the devil tried to enter into the true religion of the Jews, and he tried to influence the Jews. And you know, remember when the Jews left Egypt? Remember when they left Egypt? They took idols with them, and they brought idols with them. And the evil that came into Israel, guess where it came from? Egypt. Now here we are, 2,000 years later, and the God says, you know what? Flee to Egypt. Now there's another problem right there. Egypt is where the Jews were put in captivity. Egypt is where Pharaoh tried to kill the Jews. Now imagine the average wife on that one. You want to move to Egypt? No. Well, I don't want to go to Egypt. Why do you want to go to Egypt? That's the wrong direction. Egypt is over there. We want to go the opposite direction. But our Joseph said, no. The angel said, let's go to Egypt. You know what our Lord said 30 years later? He said, make friends with the mammon of iniquity, and they'll receive you into everlasting dwellings. You know that who are going to be the ones that come to kill us? Who betrayed Christ? Was it Caiaphas? No. It was Judas that betrayed Christ. Who betrayed Christ? His own apostle, his own disciple, his own friends. Who are the ones that tried to kill him? His own people. Caiaphas and Annas. 
It was the chosen people and the priests that tried to kill him. Do you know that he could have escaped? He could have gone to Greece. And if he went to Greece, he would not have died. But our Lord Jesus Christ wanted to die. But you know, the time will come when we have to flee. The bad guys come in the front door and we may have to run away. Well, Joseph ran to Egypt. Because you know what? When, you, when our Lord wants you to be safe, it doesn't matter where you go. You can never be harmed. So why yeah. not Egypt? So therefore, our Lord was brought by St. Joseph into Egypt. You know that some of the fathers tell us, some, there's a tradition, that when St. Joseph was on his way to Egypt, and the baby was with him, they passed idols, just little golden stone idols, stone idols of the pagan the gods, and when they walked past them, the idols broke, just because Christ and little baby came by. And the idols fell. And Joseph went into Egypt. You know why? Our Lord Jesus, Joseph went into Egypt, and our Lord Jesus Christ went into Egypt. He wanted to go to Egypt because his, his people were there. That's where Joseph, remember Joseph in the Old Testament? He was sold into slavery, and he went to Egypt. Our Lord Jesus Christ wanted to go to Egypt. And he saved the Jewish people out of Egypt. And so if, if Joseph could save the Jews in Egypt, so, Lord, so could St. Joseph save Jesus Christ by bringing him to Egypt. So they went to Egypt. And meanwhile, behind, those boys were dying. And the mothers were weeping. It was a terrible weeping. And therefore, we don't have the glory of the Mass today. But you know how long the Gloria is sung? Forever. It's sung for all eternity. The Gloria never stops. It never, never stops. Right now, the Gloria is being sung in heaven by those boys. You know what? Do they want to live to be an old age and die at the age of 137 after taking their pills? No. Any real boy, what's he want to die in? War. Battle. Fighting for the great king. Fighting for Christ. Doing some noble thing. And you know that when we love God, you know, what it's, you know St. Alphonsus? He was like 90-something when he died. You know the St. Anthony of the Desert? He was 113 when he died. You know, what the, you, know what, you know what the scripture tells us? Or the, the martyrology tells us? And Anthony died of hard labor. He died of labor. He did not die of years. You know what the most terrible thing in the world to die of? Old age. And what we're supposed to die of is love. We're supposed to die uh, in the battlefield. You know that when we're, when we're sick... We're supposed to offer that sickness to God, and we're in the battlefield. When we're in our old age, we're supposed to prepare ourselves to go through the gates of heaven. And we're in the battlefield. And you know what? There's devils trying to stop us, aren't there? You call on the Blessed Virgin Mary. You call on St. Joseph. Joseph will rise up in the middle of the night and take the baby. Joseph will rise in the middle of the night and carry the Blessed Virgin Mary. Imagine how the Blessed Virgin felt traveling next to Joseph. Do you think she was afraid? There was no fear in her. She knew she was the most. She was more safe with that carpenter who didn't have a sword, who was just walking slowly to Egypt. She was more safe with that Joseph the carpenter than she was if all the armies of the world were trying to protect her son. If she had to choose between a whole bunch of armies, security, you know they got security systems now. They got computerized computer systems. You know what's happening now? Thieves that couldn't pick a lock can now break into your house because they know how to use a computer. Now all you have is more thieves. That's what's happened. Because the world today is stupid. Not only wrong, it's stupid. And you know what they do, these thieves? Because you've got computer systems and you've got cameras. Guess what? They check your camera to see if you're at home or not. Instead of having to listen, look at the car in the office. Then they check your schedule. And they know exactly when you're gone. And then they come and steal everything. They know exactly where you put things because you, you were nice enough to put a camera in your house so they could watch where you hide things. You don't remember where you hide things, but they got it on camera. <laughs> then they come and they steal it, and you figure out six months later, oh, my jewelry is stolen. Darn. <laughs> all my money I stuffed in the safe is all stolen. Yeah, because the guy stole it six months ago because he broke in through your stupid career security system. Mary didn't believe in that security system. The mother of God didn't believe in that kind of security system. Her security system was a carpenter. Her security system was St. Joseph. He was very quiet. And all he did was say, yeah, let's get up in the night. Let's walk to Egypt. And they walked to Egypt. And those boys who died that day, they have a glory that we speak about. You know, they died 2,017 years ago. 
and their glory is still with them. What about the other boys that didn't die? They are forgotten. But those boys are remembered forever. And those boys entered the kingdom of heaven when this good thief came into paradise. He saw all those innocent boys. And here is this thief who lived a wicked life. And he wept for his sins. But he lived a wicked life. And he wept for his sins. And he went with Christ with all those innocent boys into the kingdom of heaven. And so today is the day of the holy innocence. Where we must remember the enemies of God will always hate goodness. They will always try to kill it. And they will fail. Because if God does not want us to die, what's going to happen? We're going to escape with Joseph. And if they kill us, they're going to fail even worse. Because then they bring us straight to the kingdom of heaven, to perpetual glory, and we'll never be forgotten, and our, our life will never end. And so the devil has two choices. He can either lose and fail, or he can fail and lose. Those are his options, because the devil is a fool, and the devil is a loser, and the devil is wicked, and the devil will be forgotten, and the devil is defeated. And today was one of the days in which Satan was defeated. In his anger, he tried to stop Christ from growing to a man. All he did was make 500 saints. And later on, Satan in his anger would have a cross constructed to kill Christ. And all he did was bring about the redemption of the human race. And later on, he would try to destroy the saints and destroy the Catholic Church. And all he did was make saints who were built in this, our holy church and will remain until the end of time. And right now, he's trying to destroy the church, and he can't destroy it. Mm -hmm. He can't. Mm -hmm. So the holy innocents always mm -hmm. defeat the wise, wicked men of the world. Have confidence in the holy innocents and in the holy mother. And the, so in any case, we, we pray that We'd be faithful to our Lord, and it's better to die in the battlefield, better to die with love of God in our hearts, better to die doing something for Christ, than it is to just live until you can die after you've taken your medication on your field, and the doctor said you died healthy. We don't need to die healthy. We need to die in love with God. When I close that, God bless you all. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Ghost. Amen.